Do you want to make sure that you have plenty of zero bite, zero point marinara sauce on hand? I have just the recipe for you. It's a stovetop marinara that I got from Smart Points Diva. And I'm going to show you how to make it coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Today's is someone else's. It comes from Smart Points Diva on YouTube. I found this recipe early on in my weight loss journey last year for a 0.0 bite marinara sauce and it's made on the stovetop. I know there are crock pot versions, but I like this kind of simmering on the stovetop sauce. You could also do this in the crock pot if you chose to. It is your call. Now, I don't know if Smart Points Diva has been putting out any new content lately. I don't believe so. Um, but she does have a few good recipes that I have used over the past year and a half or so. So I did make a couple of changes to her recipe. In her recipe, she used two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm using some Pam cooking spray. The reason is I wanted this to be a true zero bite, zero point marinara sauce. If you used the olive oil, once you got to two servings, it went up to a point. And I didn't want to have that chance. I wanted it to be true zero so that if you had a little extra, it wasn't gonna be a problem. Another change I made, she used a teaspoon of sugar. I replaced that with a teaspoon of Swerve sweetener. That's my preferred sweetener. It's a one-to-one -one replacement for sugar. If you're using something stronger, as I always say, just go by whatever your manufacturer's details tell you on replacing for sugar. Now, the reason I did that was, like I said, I wanted it to be a true zero bite, zero point food. And if you added a teaspoon of sugar, which is not bad, but once you got up to 10 servings, it became a point. I mean, it's not that big of a deal if you because i'm not going to have 10 cups of pasta sauce at the one time but i just wanted it to be a true zero bite food but you could use a teaspoon of sugar you could use the oil i will leave a link to her video below so that you can access and see exactly what she did now another change that i made i'm using three cans 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes she used two cans of crushed tomatoes and one of plum tomatoes that she then crushed in her hands because she liked having some texture in her marinara sauce. And that is totally something you could do. You could also use some diced tomatoes if you don't mind those chunks. I prefer a smooth marinara sauce. So that's why I've opted to go with just crushed tomato. So we also have two cups of onions that I've diced. And I also had some leftover pepper that I didn't want to go bad. And this is not part of her recipe, but I'm going to just throw those pieces in and let the flavor get in there. I'm not going to chop it up and get little bits in there. I just want that flavor. I also have here, she calls for two carrots that have been chopped like into big chunks because these you're also not gonna keep in there. These are just to get that sweetness from the carrot in there. And so what I'm doing is I'm using eight ounces of baby carrots, which is about a cup or so, um, because what I like to do is once I take these out, I like to have them as a side dish. They're nice and soft and tender and they have a nice little sweetness to them and the tomato doesn't really conflict with the carrot as far as I'm concerned. 
So I like to cook an extra bunch of these. I also have in here one bay leaf. Bay leaf is also going to come out. You always, always take out your bay leaf whenever you put it in. That's just to infuse whatever you're cooking with flavor. I also have three stalks of celery. They're just big pieces because again, these are coming out. Now she calls for a quarter cup of sliced, thinly sliced garlic. Um, I'm not going through all that fuss. I have a quarter cup of minced garlic and that's what I'm going with. If you want to thinly slice some garlic cloves, a quarter cup's worth, that's your call. I ain't doing it. Okay, so here in our spice blend, we have a teaspoon of oregano, which she actually says is optional. But for me, oregano is a very prominent flavor in marinara sauce or any sort of tomato sauce. So I'm keeping it in, but apparently you don't have to. There's also a teaspoon of basil, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and she calls for a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. But if you've watched this channel at all, Paul, my partner, is not a fan of spicy foods. And even though a teaspoon wouldn't make it that spicy, I've cut it down to a half a teaspoon just to get that flavor in there, but not hopefully make it too spicy for him. And there is also two teaspoons of kosher salt. Now, kosher salt is half as strong in flavor as table salt because the grains are much bigger on kosher salt. So if you're using table salt, I would cut that down to one teaspoon. Two teaspoons of kosher would equal about one teaspoon of table. So don't do a one-to-one -one swap for those. Okay, so we're gonna stir it off in our pot, spraying it with cooking spray. And you're starting off in a cold pan and we're going to add in the onions and just using the peppers as a little scoop. Put those in there for now. And the garlic. And we're gonna put that on over medium high heat. And you're just going to stir these around and heat them up just so they start to soften a little bit. You're not looking for color. Um, you're not looking for anything but for the flavors to start to bloom on those. And you want to make sure that you're watching the garlic so that it doesn't burn. You want to stir it frequently at this point. Now the reason you don't want to start it off in a hot pan is because once you've added those onions into a hot pan, they'll start to sizzle and brown a little bit. And a little bit of browning isn't bad, but you don't want it initially. So you just want to get it slowly up to a good temperature and a good softness. So I'll give this a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, so if I don't get steamed out of here, that garlic steam is like napalm. Um, okay, so you can see that the, if the steam's not in the way, you can see that the onions have softened a little bit and the garlic is obviously giving off its garlicky scent. Now we are going to add in our tomato and you're going to add in all three cans. Then you're gonna take one can, one empty can and fill it up with water and add that in as well. Because we're going to be cooking this low and slow for about two hours. So adding that extra water will help keep this from getting too thick. Okay, let me stir that around a little bit. And then I will go grab some water. Be right back. 
Okay, so adding in one can of water and stir that through. And you'll see it's gotten a little bit thinner because of that water, obviously. But like I said, we're going to cook it for a while, partially covered. If you saw my pumpkin butter video, you'll see it's the same thing. You just kind of put the lid on, but at an angle. And that will allow some of the steam to come out and release some of the wateriness of it, but not dry it out too much or thicken it too much. Okay, so now we're going to add in our seasonings, our sweetener, even just sitting out this little time, that sweetener started to clump up, but it'll break up in there. I'm gonna stir this through before I add in the other vegetables and the bay leaf, just to make sure those herbs and spices get blended in there. And now these are all just gonna go in whole, just as they were, the bay leaf, don't forget that, and the celery. I'm gonna stir this through. Now we want this to come up and start to bubble a little bit, and then we're going to turn down the heat. So let me clear up a few things, and maybe by then we will be bubbling. Okay, you can see we have some bubbles coming up here. It's just what you're looking for. Now this took probably about 10, 12 minutes for it to start to boil. And you want to make sure that you are stirring it periodically during that time, because not only will that keep anything that's on the bottom from burning, it'll also get some of the hot tomato mixed in with some of the cooler tomato and start evening out the temperature. So it'll help to heat faster as well. So now that we are at our boiling state, we are going to turn it down to low and we are going to partially cover. Like I said, you don't want to cover it completely like that. You want to put it off at an angle so there is a little slope here allowing a little bit of the steam to come out. A little come out the back as well. But that way it lets some of the water and moisture cook off but keeps a lot of it in there so that it's not going to be overly dry. So this will sit here and simmer for about two hours and then I will come back and show you our next steps. Okay, so it has been two hours and you can see our sauce is thickened up a little bit from what it was and all of those flavors have melded in there with the tomato. So what I'm going to do is fish out all of the extras. The carrots I'm going to put in one bowl because as I said, I'm going to eat those. And the other things. Now the onions you want to keep in there. And if you don't like the texture of the onions, or if you don't like onions, Jennifer Lynn, um, you don't have to use them. And if you don't like the texture, um, but you want that flavor, you can use a stick blender and blend this all down so that it is, there are no chunks. And that's probably what I will do. I don't mind a little bit of the texture there, but so let me finish fishing all this out and I will be back. Now one thing you want to make sure you get out is the bay leaf. Especially if you're going to puree this, you don't want that left in there while you're pureeing. Okay, I believe I got everything out of there now. And you can see it's a nice thick sauce. Now this makes, according to Smart Points Diva, about 10 cups, 20 servings, which is a half a cup of serving. 
And let me just double check with my spatula. Yeah, it seems like I've gotten everything out. So let me get rid of these things, wash up a little bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my carrots over here in this bowl, very soft. I will be probably adding these. We're having beef stew for dinner, which you will be seeing Friday. And I will probably add these into that. So let me put that off to the side and show you our sauce. I think it's okay for me. I don't think I'm going to use the stick blender on it because I cut the onion very small and it's very soft. So I don't think that will be a problem for us. Now, as I said, I wanted this to be a true zero. So I made a few variations. I left out the oil for sauteing the onion and garlic and used cooking spray. And I took out the teaspoon of sugar and substituted a teaspoon of swerve. So that is true zero bite, no matter how much you had of this. Now for the way I did it, and this is where calories and macros might be off because I input the carrots, the pepper, and the celery, and the bay leaf, into the recipe builder. So that's incorporated, but then I took them out. So I think the macros should reflect that those are not in here any longer. You were just cooking them to get some of that sweetness from the carrots and some of the celery flavor. I don't believe my calories or macros will be accurate. I don't count those usually. So I'm just going off of what I input into the app because it will show me those things. For eye track bites, that is. So what I got was 45 calories for a half a cup. The fat would be zero grams because we didn't add in that olive oil. The carbs would be 11.4 grams. But again, I think that's because of the carrot. So since they're not in here, I'm not sure how that works. If someone could let me know down below who does follow macros and calories, I'm assuming those should not be counted because they were removed. But I'm going off of what I have and hopefully you will go off of whatever you input your information in. And the protein would be 2.4 grams the way I did it. Now, I also calculated for the way um, Smart Points Diva made it. And the calories would be 58 for one half cup. The fat would be 1.4 grams because of the olive oil. The carbs would be 11.2. And again, I'm not sure on that because of removing the carrots and celery. And the protein would be 2.3 grams. So if someone could comment down below, if you do follow macros, how would something like that work? Should I remove the calories? I mean, I'm assuming the calories should go as well, but should the macros for those items that were removed also be removed? Or is there something, I'm assuming that's the case. But like I said, I don't really follow macros. Somebody had asked me if I could supply that information. So I am doing the best I can with that based on what I input into my iTrack Bytes recipe builder. But I hope you like this video and I hope you will give this marinara a try. Like I said, you could do it in a crock pot, but I just like the idea of it simmering on the stove all day. Well, not all day, it was two hours. Um, you could be doing other things while this is simmering away. Be great for 
anything, pasta, meatballs, whatever. Whatever you would use pasta sauce for, you could maybe thicken it a little bit, cook it down a little bit more, and use it as a pizza sauce. So there are options. But if you liked this video and this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and you are looking for recipes to help you on a weight loss journey. And hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. And if there's someone that you know who would benefit from a recipe like this, please feel free to share this video with them. And you can also follow me on social media. Here is my Instagram handle, as well as the two Facebook groups that I am a part of, mine, which is Recipes with Roy, and Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H, which I co-admin with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel and Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. So, if you need to stock up on some sauce, have some ready, put some in the freezer for when you do need something. This makes quite a bit, so you can have it on hand for whenever you need it. And I am going to find a use for it as soon as I can. So until next time, bye.